Antibodies fight off viruses in the human body, and vaccines force the immune system to make antibodies against the disease by introducing weakened forms of the virus into the body. In other words, they make the disease fight itself. And there are literally dozens and dozens of vaccines in the developmental stages as scientists look for a way to cure COVID-19, and at least as many legal hurdles to be cleared before bringing a vaccine to market. Uh, here to discuss that subject with this distinguished professor of international law at FAMU uh, Law School in Orlando, Dr. Jeremy Levitt. Welcome again, doctor. Good evening, Fred Laverne. Well, let's start by asking about President Trump. He has said a vaccine could be ready by the end of the year. How realistic is that timeline? Well, realistic is one question and effective is another question. We know that the vaccines that were developed for measles, mumps, polio, rubella, smallpox, and influenza took about 10 years and about a billion dollars uh, of research. So in rushing this, uh, we also risk what happened with um, smallpox disease uh, and polio, where you had a lot of people who were infected uh, with the virus, virus accidentally. So I think pushing too fast is not good because you have to move from animal trials to human trials. And the question is, what animals are being used? Is there a cross-species analysis being done for the effectiveness of the disease and on top of that, uh, you have to have volunteers in our system to uh, test on people. Uh, which people are gonna volunteer to be tested and are there gonna be some racial and economic inequalities there? So I think we're moving too fast. The science needs to speak to the science. Uh, the economy shouldn't be speaking to the science. Hmm. And, and doctor, when a vaccine is developed for COVID-19, and we all hope it is, how long would you expect it to take to reach at least the clinical phase? Well, it, it just depends. Every test is different. Um, originally, they were saying it would take uh, at least 13 months from uh, Dr. Fauci at the CDC. That, quite honestly, seemed unrealistic. My experience working on health issues at the World Bank would say that, well, probably at the closest, 24 months. But they're pushing fast. Uh, and the problem is, is that when there's a rush to open the economy then, and, and, and a rush to open uh, a pathway to a vaccine, we got to look at what is the root of the rushing. And it seems to be money and not public health. And this is going to be a problem if scientists don't follow proper protocols uh, that, that are in place to protect human beings during a public health crisis. So what would be the vetting process of a vaccine from a legal point of view? Well, they, there are protocols in place for testing. It's driven by science. Uh, and these protocols, which are, I, I would say, are standards uh, that have legal import, drive the process, but it's really based on science. So the structure is in place, and once you test in ferrets or bats or rats, uh, and you, you see that there is a, a progress in the testing, then you can move to human trials. But that process typically takes years, so we're moving very fast. And I can tell you it's, it's, it's scary because as you've seen with the antibody testing, the testing for the coronavirus, uh, there was a rush in terms of uh, companies to cash in on it, and they were getting it wrong. And even to this day, we have a 30% miss rate, meaning that 30% 30, 30 of the people are, the, are either tested positive or negative for the coronavirus, and, and, and that 30% rate is wrong. It's a 30% fail rate. So what will happen with a vaccine? And I think, I think uh, we have collaboration across borders with different countries between China and the U.S., with Europe and the U.S., but it should be driven by science. Uh, if we move too quickly, we're going to see a, a spike in lawsuits, and we don't know how many people could be adversely affected. And before we let you go, one more quick question on that subject, uh, doctor. Say something. What are the, the barriers, the border lines? for something to make it from, say, Europe to the United States and to clear the FDA hurdle here? Well, the, obviously there's joint science and there, there, there's joint trials. The, the FDA and the CDC monitor the process. They're doing the bulk. The, the National Institute of Health is doing the bulk of the financing. And so what standards they're looking at to authenticate whether a vaccine makes it through the first trial, which is the non-human testing, and the human testing hasn't been accurately communicated because most of those rules and protocols have been waived given the pandemic. So the clear answer to that is the public doesn't know. We don't know what the standards are right now, and I think that's probably the most scary thing. Uh, as we move to human trials, 
uh, the question will be, will people uh, not just be given full disclosure of what they're going to introduce themselves to in testing, but uh, will there be a remedy in the event that the human testing fails and people become sick? Hmm, very troubling hmm. things. Thank you so much, Dr. Jeremy Levitt, Professor of International Law at FAMU. We appreciate you joining us. My pleasure. Thank you.